Hello, my name is Fox and you're watching Den of Fools. Let's jump right in. GT Bunker Hammer took place in Vittoria Gasteiz, Spain from the 23rd to the 24th of September 2023. The tournament had 5 rounds with 204 players and 1,200 games played. Sergio Garcia won the tournament with their Space Wolves, Fernando Martinez and their Aldari came second, with Charlotte de Guzmo also running Aldari in third. Big congratulations to all these players and big apologies for the poor pronunciation of their names. The winning Space Wolves list focuses more on the index units rather than their unique ones. As we know, Codex Space Marines is up for pre-order now. As it is a two-week pre-order, it will be some time before we see the new Codex in action, but conscious that it is on the way, we will focus more on the Space Wolves' unique units. With that said, Logan Grimnar himself is the Warlord. High King of Fenris is a powerful ability, which gives your melee units a huge buff. Once per game, in the charge phase, you can use the ability. Your entire army can re-roll their charge rolls, and they can re-roll hits in melee. On top of that, when he destroys an enemy, you gain a CP. The Axe of Morkai has a sweep and strike mode. He hits on twos and makes 10 attacks at strength 6, AP 2 and damage 1 for the sweep. For the strike he makes 6 attacks at strength 8, AP 2 and 3 damage. I'm sure he led the Wolf Guard Terminators with the Thunder Hammers for a potent melee threat. I would imagine they were a small sized squad so they could fit in one of the two Land Raiders. The Land Raiders are toughness 12 with a 2 plus save and 16 wounds. They allow their passengers to charge after they have disembarked and their God Hammer wise cannons make 4 shots in total hitting on threes at strength 12, AP 3, and damage D6 plus 1. They provide some nice anti-tank fire, with the other land raiders supposedly transporting one of the two six-man aggressor squads. They get AP minus 1 on their flamers when shooting at the closest eligible target, making D6 plus 1 hits at the standard flamer profile. The captain in Gravis armor will have been leading one of the squads, who would have to go in the Redeemer as it has a slightly bigger transport capacity. It has the standard profile but brings two flamestorm cannons, each making D6 plus 3 hits at strength 6, AP 2, and 2 damage, which should chew through elite infantry. When these three land raiders and their deadly cargo get in charge range, I'm sure they all disembarked and Logan's ability was used to get these three big melee units into combat reliably. This is the majority of the list, with some Thunderwolf cavalry in support. Their speed will be quite useful for scoring objectives. Finally, we have a scout sniper squad, which are heavily rumored not to be in the new codex, and two whirlwind for some anti elite infantry indirect fire. The second place Aldari list consists of many of the popular choices from before the points increase. As these have been covered in previous tournament spotlights, I won't go too in-depth on their rules. Having said that, we see the popular farce here with the Phoenix Gem Enhancement and an Autark Wayleaper as the Warlord. There is a single Solitaire and the Spirits here with the Fates Messenger Enhancement to lead the 10-man squad of Wraithguard with the D-Cannons. Despite the points increases, we see two Hornets, a Night Spinner and some Shadow Spectres. There is a squad of swooping hawks for the fast anti light infantry firepower. We then have two support weapons, which don't take the D cannons, instead taking the Shadow Weaver. They do like the new devastating wounds, with the damage one being more useful now they are no longer mortal wounds. They make D6 plus 2 attacks, with blast, hit on freeze at strength 6 and damage 1. They also have indirect fire, heavy, and can shoot out to 48 inches. We then have the still popular wart spiders and no less than 3 war walkers. I think this list is a good example of why the Eldari were so strong, as even with a sizable points increase, the nerf units are still very competitive. The third place Janari list takes Javrain as the Warlord so they can take a load of Drukari allies. She gives the unit she is leading a 5 plus feel no pain, and in your command phase you roll a d6, and on a 2 plus she restores d3 models to the unit she is leading. Having said that, as far as I can see, she can't actually lead any of the units in the army. The popular Aldari units are included, with two Night Spinners, a squad of Shadow Spectres, two War Walkers and some Warp Spiders. We do see three of some of the most competitive Drukhari units, with the maximum number of Mandrakes, two squads of Scourges and three Ravengers. The Mandrakes bring the ability to go off the board at the end of your turn if you are not in engagement range of any enemy models. You can then come back in the reinforcement step of your next movement phase as if you were coming from Deep Strike. This makes them very useful for capturing objectives and they bring some strength 5, 1 damage anti-light infantry attacks. The Ravagers bring a whole load of anti-tank fire, with 3 dark lanches on each, which hit on freeze at strength 12, AP 3 and damage D6 plus 2. Finally, the Scourge is a highly mobile anti-tank fire, with each one taking a dark lance. They have a 14 inch movement, so I'm sure they had no issue getting line of sight on the enemy heavies. If they weren't mobile enough, in the shooting phase, after they have shot, they can make a normal move of up to 6 inches. I'm sure they were rather annoying to take out, as they can jump out from behind cover, make their attacks before moving back out of line of sight. Unsurprisingly, the Space Marines are the most played factor with 
although for this tournament, the Necrons have the same number of players. Eldaria in second with 8.33%, followed by Orcs in third on 6.86%. It takes our resident stats guru and Ultramarine fanboy Fearless Fox many hours to collect all the data. It would be great if you could show your appreciation by liking and sharing the video. It really helps us with the god algorithm of YouTube. We have grouped the win rates by colour, with the key at the bottom of the screen. The tournament's second and third place finisher and second most popular Eldari topped the win race with 68.2%. The Death Guard have a good showing with a win rate of 62.9%. Admech are the last faction in blue with a 60% win rate. The Tau topped the green group with a win rate of 57.5%, followed by the Tyranids with a win rate of 56%. The third most popular faction Alts get a win rate of 52.9%. Most of the factions got below a 50% win rate, with the joint most popular faction Necrons getting a win rate of 43%. The tournament winner and other most popular faction, the Space Marines, get a win rate of 40%. There were no known warbands, with the Dark Angels leading the way for the Loyalists, with a win rate of 60%. The Blood Angels are the only chapter in green, with a win rate of 53.3%. The Space Wolves get a win rate of 46.7%, with the tournament winners' games being counted as unknown as they declared as Space Marines, although they took Space Wolf unit units. The Black Templars get a win rate of 40%, with the Death Watch on 20%, and the Ultramarines unfortunately losing all of their games. If you enjoyed our content, please subscribe, check out one of the videos on screen, and consider using our affiliate links in the description. Thank you for watching.